the Spirit in started their own businesses. And so we're going to talk a little bit about why they chose to do that and how other people might get started as well. So I'd like to welcome Amber Murphy That's right, I'm and ben, ben Dicey. Welcome to the show. So to start off with, you each decided at some point that maybe a traditional model of employment wasn't um, ideal for you and that you might want to start your, your own business. Ben, can you tell me why you made that decision? Well, I was looking for jobs, but I couldn't find any, so I said I'm going to make my own company. Do it yourself, right? Yeah. Okay. Amber, how did that happen for you? I, I kind of did the same thing as Ben. Um, I wasn't getting hired, but I also saw a need in the single people that I've noticed around don't know how to apply their own makeup. Oh, so tell me a little bit about your business then. What, what, what do you, what do you do? I um, do makeup tutorials on YouTube, and it, I break it down step by step, and like the foundation, your lipstick, your blush, even outfit of the day, okay. just to give somebody. So you saw a, a gap where individuals might need help figuring out how to do that, and you said, "Hey, I could, I could teach them." Yeah. Okay. Because um, I have caregivers, but I wanted to learn how to do it myself. Mm -hmm. I looked on YouTube, and there was nothing, nothing out there of that um, magnitude where I needed a breakdown of, okay, my left hand doesn't work today. How can I fix it? What else can I use? What yeah. else can I do? What else can I do? Okay, so you offer some tips to folks as mm -hmm. well as your as the yeah. other creative ideas. Yeah, I do. And I actually put bloopers up and <laughs> when I mess up. Yeah. That's real. People just to show that. that, you know, I'm disabled, yes, but you can also put makeup on yourself mm -hmm. and don't worry about asking for help. If you need help, ask. But you can do this too if I can do it. Okay, and a lot of individuals do like to wear makeup that helps you, you know, perks you up for the day mm -hmm. or at least enhances some natural beauty that you yeah. have. So why should that be an opportunity for everybody? Yeah, exactly. So what, what, what did you decide to name your program? Mine is Disabled Body Beauty. Okay. And can people just go on YouTube and type that in? Well, what they have to do is type youtube.com backslash the AMBUG. The AMBUG, A M B U G. Yeah. V T H E A M B U G. Okay, so that gets like to your channel. Is yeah, that it goes directly to my channel. Okay. And I also have um, a Facebook page that that takes you right to where I have my recordings. Okay. So they can watch it on Facebook or they can watch it on YouTube. So did you find using technology like that is a more convenient way to outreach to people? Um. Yes. Because I was like, okay, what, what do you need? What do I need to do this? There was frustration with me trying to explain it to people that this is how you can do it. And I've seen other people with disabilities go, you know, why can't? Why do I need my staff to help me? Mm -hmm. Well, you don't. It just takes you a little longer. My parents always taught me, hey, it's gonna take you a little longer, but you can do anything. Yeah, a lot of us like to do things for ourselves. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Then I'm going to um, switch gears to your business uh, a little bit. I don't. I know that you do something, a, a, your business is a lot different than Amber. So what did you choose to do? I decided to uh, to write paper for other companies to decide. I didn't have a success trying to find work. So. Okay, so how did you get started? I actually got a business license and it only cost me you know, like 310 bucks to do it. So. Okay, so it's just establishing yourself as, a, as an official business yep. is the first step. Right. Okay. And then, um, so you shared paper for businesses. How do you go about recruiting businesses and you know, how did you go about deciding how much to charge, things like you that? You make like booklets or something with like references and stuff in the and pass them out to other companies. So when you've got a good experience with the business, you ask them to like make a quote and then you, you, you promote yourself that way? Yeah, I pretty much go to businesses and pass out buyers. Okay. Yeah. And so this is the service <coughs> that I can offer you? Yep. 
And I think that's an important part of um, growing the business is letting people know what you do and actually, like you said, handing them something and, and that face-to-face -face opportunity or it's electronic face-to-face -face sometimes yeah. works as well. I don't think people really like stuff through the mail that much. Yeah, we, we like that face-to-face -face contact. We like that interaction, don't we? Even mm -hmm. if it's virtual. What's one of the hardest things about, or what was one of the hardest things about being started? Uh, was it easy to get started? It was kind of hard to find people that needed training done for a while. Okay. I actually did research to see if they wanted it done for like about a year mm -hmm. before I started. Oh, a lot of homework went into it. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good to know because for many people when they think about starting a business, you want to hit the ground running and a lot of times there's a lot of work behind the scenes, isn't there? Yeah. Okay. You needed some equipment as well, is that yep. true? I had to buy shredders. How many do you have? I had to buy a couple of things. Let's see, I've got uh, three shredders. I got one big commercial machine and then I got two home office size shredders. So do you go to businesses or do you pick stuff up and take it off site to shred? I can do either one. You can do either one. Okay. So if someone had confidential stuff that can't leave the premises, you, you can accommodate that. Yeah, but actually I've done some stuff that's confidential at my house before, but some people don't like that. We probably have an agreement with the business to do that. Yeah. That's another, you know, question that sometimes people have is what are, what are the policies and, you know, is there liability insurance? I mean, all of those things. Yeah, I've got liability about. insurance. You do? Yep. And is that hard to get? Fairly easy, right? Just going to, into place. I just went to IDA or something and got insurance, yeah. Found an insurance it's company. It's uh, called bonding insurance, actually. Right, yeah. Okay. And the Amber, for something like a YouTube channel, that's not something that you need, right? It's not something I need, but there's other people that do have the licensing and stuff like that to sell other products from so their YouTube channel. You had some investing to do as well, though, right? Yeah. What kind of supplies and equipment did you find that that you you knew you needed right away, or maybe you, you, you were surprised as you got into it? I was surprised at the cost of a, a miniature tripod um, that I set on my vanity, and I and the camera costs and just the makeup cost. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get sponsors right now so I don't have to pay retail prices for the makeup. So that initial investment, not only in the time when you're doing, like you said, that research for um, what you want to do, but also having enough startup stuff, adding the equipment mm -hmm. that you need to do the job yeah. that you want to do. Yeah. So that preparation ahead of time. I think it's important for our viewers to, to be aware of that there's a lot that goes into that. Yeah, because most people think they can just start a business and that's it. Mm -hmm. They don't realize they have to do a bunch of background work before they can actually start the company. So if you were to um, offer suggestions, because some people are you know, watching you thinking, wow, I could probably do a business of my own as well. What would you suggest to help them get started? For myself, it would be do your research on YouTube and see if the niche fits you. If it doesn't fit you and you're not comfortable in front of the camera, mm -hmm. don't do it. But when I first started, I wasn't comfortable in front of the camera at all. I had a um, certificate from Delta to be a photographer, which would mean I was behind the camera, the camera right. instead of in front of it. And for like the first gut reaction was like, what am I doing? Do I really want to put myself out there? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great example because a lot of times when people try something, whether it's, you know, a, you're self-employed or, or any job for the first time, sometimes you're like, oh, is this, was this really what I wanted yeah, to do? Yeah, you're quite nervous and then you're like, wait a minute, did I really want to do this or not? Yeah. Probably like the first time you went to go ask a business if they wanted your service, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was a little nervous. Of course, now I'm not that nervous anymore because I've done it a long time. But right. Yeah, you've done it a long time and that's the skill that you have. So yep. when you think about growing your business or expanding the, the folks that you reach, um, 